This video covers the content of the SAP Cloud Platform Workflow Virtual Event, content which is available on GitHub, and specifically, it covers content for Exercise 4, establishing a destination in SAP Cloud Platform. Now, in this exercise, there are four steps, and these steps will lead us through defining a destination definition in our SAP Cloud Platform subaccount that points to an OData service on the pretend on-prem ES5 backend SAP system. And that destination definition will use or specify the SAP Cloud Connector as the route to it. So the steps in this exercise will get us to check the data source itself before we really start properly, just to make sure we're familiar with the data source. Then we're gonna, then we're gonna create a new destination definition on SAP Cloud Platform in this particular section here, actually. Once we've created that destination definition, we're going to test that destination definition before we go any further with the content of this virtual event. And a good way to test that is to deploy a really simple app just with a little bit of routing so that we can make sure that the SAP Cloud Platform can reach the OData service on this so-called on-prem backend system. Once we've deployed the app, we're gonna use that to make sure that connection does work correctly and explore an entity set in that OData service. So let's get going. We can see here that the, instru the first instruction in step one is to open up the uh, OData service, the EPM ref apps shop serve OData service. So I'm gonna copy that link and I'm just open it up in a new tab over here. We can see that it returns not unexpectedly, a service document, an OData service document where we can see that the different entity sets are suppliers, main categories, subcategories, reviews, products, and so on. That's great. So we know at least that independently this backend system is working and this particular OData service is also working and available. So now we want to go to our trial sub account homepage, and I'm already there using I've used this bookmark. And we're going to use the destinations menu item within the connectivity item here. So if we go to our destinations list, we'll see a couple of destinations that exist already. And these destinations were created by us running the booster, the workflow management booster in a previous exercise in this content. So for this particular exercise and beyond, we can ignore these two existing destinations. What we want to do is create a new destination. The actual OData service itself is related to shops, so we're going to call a destination that points to that OData service shop info. Now, there are four possible types of destination, and we want, of course, the HTTP type. It's not LDAP, it's not mail, and it's not RFC. Now, don't be confused by the fact that there's no HTTPS here. The fact that uh, we're specifying the type here is really more about the protocol here than anything else. We can just copy across that description. And the most important value of all, of course, is the URL. Now, let's just have a look at the URL. The URL points to a host name that isn't available on the internet, virtual ES5. This is the host name, the virtual host name that we specified in the previous exercise in the SAP Cloud Connector configuration when we were exposing a particular set of resources to this particular sub-account here. Notice also that the port is 8000, not 443, which was the original port, the real port that the real OData service is exposed upon. Notice as well that unlike what we specified in the Cloud Connector connection definition, we're using HTTP. This is because we're about to specify for the proxy type on premise. That signifies that we're going to use an SAP Cloud Connector connection to route through to that final host name and port combination. That means in turn that that connection, this on premise proxy type connection, is a connection through the secure tunnel created by the SAP Cloud Connector, which means that it would be overkill to use HTTPS between SAP Cloud Platform and the SAP Cloud Connector. 
of course, beyond the cloud connector to the backend system itself, we're still using HTTPS. Now we're going to use basic authentication, which will pass, be passed through to the backend system. So I'm going to specify my authentication here. Did you also notice that when we specify proxy type on premise, we also got a new field here to fill in if we wanted to, which identifies a particular SAP cloud connector. If you have multiple cloud connectors connected to this same sub account, you need a way of course of pointing to which one you want to be used. So the second and subsequent cloud connector connections need to have location ID specified. When we set up our connection in the previous exercise, we didn't specify a location ID because we knew that we were going to be using only one SAP cloud connector connection. Okay, so let's save that and we're done. If for whatever reason you were unable to uh, set up a cloud connector uh, container in Docker, then this is a section for you here. Okay, so notice that here's a with SAP cloud connector, which we've just done. If you were unable to set up a cloud connector for whatever reason, you couldn't get Docker Desktop installed on your machine, then you can still continue with this exercise, but make sure, of course, you specify a direct connection to the ES5 system. So the proxy type is internet, and it's the original host name, port and scheme. Okay, note that in both cases, it's good practice to specify the default client that we're gonna be needing on the backend system. So ES5's default SAP client is 002. So we're gonna edit this destination to add a new property, which will be SAP client, and we can specify 002 there. So now we've got this destination, but we're not really sure at this point whether everything will work, whether a connection via this destination all the way down the tunnel that was created by the SAP Cloud Connector connection that's established right now, from there on to the actual backend system, which is ES5. We're not really sure that that connection will work. So it's a good idea to test that. We have step three in this exercise that allows us to do that. There's a really simple app that's been made available in this particular exercise. This app, if you have a look, is in a folder called Dest Test App, and you can explore that yourself if you need to. We're going to be downloading the zipped up contents of the app which is basically a package.json and xsapp.json as well. All the xsapp.json does is route any incoming request to the target via the destination shop info. There's no actual code in this app. So jumping back down to step three, the files that are related to the app that we're going to use for testing are described here. Having noted the contents of the manifest.yaml, we saw that it requires the, the services test XSUAA, default connectivity, and test destination. What does that mean? That means that this particular application relies on instances of these three services. The authorization and trust management service, the connectivity service for connecting via an SAP cloud connector, and the destination service for reading destination definitions. So we need to make sure that we have instances of these three services available to us. We can see here that we're going to set up two of the services, XS UAA and Destination, manually now before deploying the app. The reason we're not setting up the connectivity service is because we've already got a connectivity service that we can use. If we have a look at the overview of our sub account and jump straight to the service instances here, we can see that we have a connectivity service instance already. We actually also have an XSUAA service instance, but we're not gonna use that. That's the reason why the name of the connectivity service instance, default connectivity in the manifest.yaml is deliberately set to point to that existing service. The other two service instances begin test underscore, and that's what we're gonna set up now. So further down in step three, it's telling us to navigate to the dev space in our organization. So we're already in the dev space here and we want the service marketplace, 
where we can find the Access UAA service and the destination service. And what we need to do is set up instances of these two services according to this table here. Now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything. Right. So first of all, we need to select the service from the marketplace. Then we select the instances menu of that service. We want to create a new instance and then we want to follow the details of this table for each time. So first of all, let's set up an instance of the authorization and trust management service, which is just here. There is the instances menu item. And you can see already, like we saw a few minutes ago, that there is actually an instance that's being used elsewhere. We want to create our, our own instance. The plan, as specified here, is the application plan. There are parameters for this service which we can upload. Those parameters are described exactly in this Access Security JSON file that we downloaded. There are no applications to assign. And the name we want to give this particular instance, of course, is test-xsuaa. Similarly, we want to look for the destination service, which we can do also like this, in the instances menu, we see we have no instances of the destination service. So let's create a new instance. The service plan is light. There are no parameters to upload. There are no applications to assign. And the instance name that we want to specify is test destination. And as it says in the note here, these names are deliberate and important because they're referenced in the manifest.yaml file that describes the application's requirements. So once we've done that, we should be able to jump back to our list of existing service instances and see that we have the test destination service instance and the test access UAA service instance indicated here by the arrows. Okay, so now it's time to deploy the test application. We can use the navigation menu to jump to our applications list and use this deploy application button to upload an archive of an application, the zip file that we downloaded before. So that is the app.zip file that we downloaded. And we're using a manifest, and that manifest is, as you guessed it, the manifest.yaml that we also downloaded. And we're going to hit deploy. That's going to upload the app.zip file, and it's got to, going to upload the manifest.yaml, which describes to the cloud platform what service instances to bind to. Okay, the app is now listed in a green started state. We're going to select the name, and we can see that we have here in the application roots section a URL. That URL is made up of the application name and a random selection of characters because we specified we wanted a random route. So let's select that now. And there we go. We go straight from this application that's running in our SAP Cloud Platform sub-account, but the data that we're getting is coming all the way from our on-prem ES5 backend system. Specifically, it's the service document of the OData service to which we defined the destination definition. So as a final part to this exercise, let's just make sure that it's not just the service document that's returned. We can explore, for example, the products entity set. So we just need to append products slash products to the end of the URL, and we should receive product information from that OData service. Now this is XML, of course, but we can also append a system query option, dollar format equals JSON, to, to ask for the same data in JSON format. So that's pretty much it. So we've defined a destination in our SAP Cloud Platform sub-account, pointing to an OData service on a back-end system that's, in theory, 
behind a corporate firewall and we're connecting to it via the SAP Cloud Connector tunnel that's been established. Thanks for watching.